Okay, guys, I have totally had it. We're not doing any more nerd shit. Everything's about being cool in this video because that's what it's about in the world of JavaScript. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this boring nerd function and we are going to turn it into an arrow function that is both badass, cool looking, as well as super functional. This is a function declaration. This is kind of old school. And one day some really badass JavaScript developer looked at this function, said, nah, -uh, not here, no more nerd shit. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a function expression. And when we have a function expression versus a function boring nerd function declaration, what we have is essentially an anonymous function that is located within a variable. And we talked about function expressions before, and that's basically the whole entire gist. You're taking this uh, anonymous function and you're putting it in a variable. But we can even go further than this, and this is where things even get cooler. What if we could take out this part right here and even make it shorter and cooler without the function keyword? Well, what you have is you have an error function. Watch, that's the only thing that we did is we just took out the function keyword and we added an error function. And that's the whole entire gist of it. But that's not enough. We need to do a couple practice rounds but I'm also going to show you a very important aspect about how arrow functions handle the this keyword. Okay, so let's just go ahead and let's start off with a classic but uncool function declaration. I think that's how you spell function declaration. So first thing, a function declaration is the uncool not badass version of functions and it's pretty simple and we will just in here we will return a plus b and that is what you have you have just a good old function declaration plenty of use cases but once again not the coolest so let's just turn this function declaration into a function expression and the way that you do that is you just put it inside of a variable just like this so you go function declar or function keyword then go down here then we are going to return a plus b and that is exactly how you turn a function declaration into a function expression so and i put the one there because it will conflict but pretty much the same exact thing as the one up here but how do we actually turn this function expression into an arrow function all that we do is we take out the function keyword then go here and add a fat arrow sometimes people call, sometimes people just call it an arrow sometimes people call it a fat arrow it really doesn't matter what you want to call it but there are even more ways to keep this thing shorter. We could even shorten it up if we wanted to. And the way that we could shorten it up is we could just actually move this. If it's just one line, you don't need any brackets or anything. And you could even shorten this up more if it had only one actual parameter. This won't work. If you have more than one parameter, you're still going to have to keep the parentheses. But if you have only one parameter, what you can do is you can even take away the parentheses and it can look exactly like that. This is now an arrow function. So we can change this from a function expression to an arrow function, just like this. But Another important part, and this is getting very uh, in-depth, this is getting kind of past what some people would say is a beginner JavaScript course, but I'm going to show you a very important reason why you want to pay attention to using an arrow function over a function declaration. And this is going to come whenever we actually have this inside of an arrow function. So what we're going to do, we're going to have... A, what we're gonna, we're gonna create a fast food object and we're going to have a array of our favorite restaurants, our favorite fast food restaurants right here. And within this array, my favorite is going to be Chipotle and my other favorite restaurant is going to be a restaurant called Cookout, which is pretty much like the In-N-Out burger of the Carolinas. 
and it's going to be a type of fast food. And then here we are going to create a function that is going to iterate through our restaurants and display them in the actual browser. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the keyword this dot restaurants and we are going to map. So within the context of this, this is representative of restaurants. So this dot restaurants is going to say this object is going to be the representation. So this is a representation of what we have inside of our object. And in most programming languages, that's what this is. So this dot restaurants, if you don't know what this dot restaurants is, this is going to say this restaurants within our object. So then we're going to map through them and we're going to use a regular boring function and then we are going to return. So let's see here. So I'm going to return and use string interpolation. So go up here and we're going to return the restaurant and we're going to say is a this dot type and we're going to say restaurant. So it's a type of fast food restaurant or that's what it should actually log out. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go up to our fast food and we are going to run this function within our fast food. Let's go ahead here and let's actually console log it within our browser. And when we do that, what we're going to find is that we get undefined. And the reason that we get undefined is because this map function exists somewhere out. God knows where within ES6 or the JavaScript code base. We are using this map, but this actual map function exists somewhere else. So whenever you use a boring, I call it a nerd function, I'm just trying to be funny, but whenever you use a regular, just boring function that's not an arrow function, what's going to happen is that this is going to execute way off somewhere else that you have no idea what's going where it's going to actually execute. And this is going to be something like a huge number that you have no idea. So in this scenario, the boring function that we had before is going to make it so that our this is just some random place that we have no idea actually exists in memory. We can't actually control this. And when we have a arrow function, so watch what happens when we have an arrow function. So when we have an actual arrow function, we get the actual fast food because this, whenever map goes off and executes, this is going to stay the same because this is inherited from fast food. So whenever you have a boring function and it goes off and executes, the this is going to change and it's going to be dynamic. But when we have a new school cool arrow function, this is going to be representative of the actual fast food because the this is not going to be dynamic. Once again, it's kind of advanced. You can get by totally without knowing the whole entire in-depth story about how this works with an arrow function. But if you are going to be a professional JavaScript developer, especially if you're going to work with React, you're going to have to know that 100%. But Anyways, that's going to be my video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.